Welcome everybody to another video. I'm thinking about dropping a hot rap album. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, we have a question by Vincent Lopez. It's a little long, but here we go. Eric, I have a question for you. I wanted to hear your thoughts on if opposites attract or not. For the most part, or for most of my life, I felt that my personality wasn't conducive for a strong or long-lasting companionship. I never had much trouble fitting in with anyone or any group in the past, with the exception of being exposed to large amounts of people at once. I understand that. As by observing a person for a while can be ex can expose a lot of who they are, what they like, and what makes them laugh and feel comfortable, and so on. But more often than not, it feels like I just put on a mask. I had given some thought, and at first it felt like I couldn't be happy with anyone unless they were like myself, but after further thought, I thought that it could just be as easily, or cause, uh, just as easily drive me crazy depending on the nuances of the person and their interests, values, etc. Uh, one thing that really called, uh, called this into question for me was a girl I met online playing a game. On the surface, I think if we had met in the real world, I never would have given her a second glance. I thought, or I might have been, uh, I might even been repulsed, not physically speaking, of course, but as I got to know her, she had a simpleness to her and a cheery, the cup is half full attitude that I felt really drawn to her, or felt really drawn to. But who's to say I didn't keep up with her for too long and it was always online? So, <clears throat> they have two parts in here that are very interesting. One, about the, you know, opposites attracting, and then also talking about um, how you how you behave in group dynamics and how you present yourself um, with in, uh, just socially. But then you have this other thing with, like, how you met this person. And so I'm just going to go with the first part of just, like, opposites attracting. I would say yes, but I would also say no. And then I would say yes, and I would say no at the same time. I was, <laughs> they're both. Um, because what I find is that if you have something completely opposite, there's no mutual connection there. I'm doing hand signals and you can't see them. <laughs> and there's no mutual connection to allow a bond to happen between you and the other person. <clears throat> and so if I were to, let's see, talk to an ISFJ woman, and since we're kind of more talking about relationships than, than anything else, um, I will find an intrigue in them. But as I've gotten to know is that the more that I try to talk to an ISFJ woman, there's, there's a slight disconnect that there are things that I really value in a relationship or just to be able to communicate with them. And since they're a sensory type, it is very difficult to, to share certain insights and aspects and, and inferences that I might hold on to that other intuitives might have or have their own set and it's fun to explore those. But a sensory person, you are kind of locked in to a very practical realm and if you have not experienced a personal connection with them prior, then there would not be a natural instinct to to stick with them. But then, like what you're talking about, you had this in, this interaction with this person online. It has allowed you to create a bond with this person, so that you can end up seeing past the initial, I guess, turnoffs or not even just turnoffs, but. Um, things that you would find in another person where you go, yeah, they're nice, and then you just don't really, you know, attract to them that way, you wouldn't go further with them, um, whatever that might be, even if they are kind of opposite, but you have built a memory and a connection which binds you two together. And so <clears throat> I would end up with an ISFJ woman if, let's say, we end up, would say we both end up in a you know, like concentration camp or something weird like that. <laughs> I mean, that's extreme, but like, but through that commitment that or forced commitment that we would have, and I know probably concentration camps had men and women, but you know what I mean. But it's just like a very um, a time of trial where this person is forced into your most personal bubble, and there is a natural um, interest because of their opposite. Um, and to have that memory with them is, would be so valuable. There would be, that would be a stronger um, mover to connect me to that person than if I were to just be walking along the street and I find this person, and hey, they're kind of interesting, but you know, I don't really have that bond with them. And so I would say personal interaction and having that memory and, and finding that common ground there um, <clears throat> is far more stronger. But yeah, so like, but with opposites, just naturally attracting, 
um, you still want to have you know that that thing that is con that connects you to. It's not just you guys are so opposite that you come together and not know what to do with each other. <clears throat> Though these opposites are going to be the strengths of your weaknesses and, and vice versa, but there has to be a bridge that connects your in or that connects both of your both of your interests, or not even just interests, but just how you view the world, or if you have a common ambition or a common way of life that you look at or something like that there has to be some kind of common trait um, because if you have everything similar so if I were to date an INTP that would not that would not be great because we just we view in it, the world in a far too similar apathetic way and there's too many similarities um, and I am attracted to uh, the spontaneity of let's say an ENFP uh, woman and on these other traits because they are complementary to me and so they are my opposite but these people also are able to have certain common um, common traits that we can share so that we can actually build something off of if you just kind of not have anything then you're not going to be able to build anything and it doesn't matter if you're opposite or not but in the end the more off or you're going to have opposites naturally but there's going to be a common like connection if you have somebody that you have experienced life with in a very personal, personable or yeah, just personable way, um, that is going to trump a lot of those um, just kind of s those petty nuances where just like, well, you know, we don't really have these things in common. If you have that bondage that way, it's going to trump it and you're going to be able to overlook a lot of those things because you guys share a very personal you know, interaction with each other. So, I mean, that's just kind of my thoughts. I kind of went in circles a little bit, but I hope that answers your question. Vincent, thank you so much for asking. I'll see you guys in another video, another life. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Do opposites attract? What parts of opposition, opposition attracts? What parts of similarities attract? And do you think that there are other ways that can attract people to each other? That may not be about opposites, opposites, opposites or not. But <laughs> anyways, um, peace out. And stuff and yeah